The Agi Bridge A Japanese folk tale Once, in the province of Omi, a band of soldiers sat around a fire sharing stories of their bravery and conquest. Each tried to outdo the other. But there was one danger that chilled them all to their bones. They spoke barely above a whisper as they talked of the Agi Bridge. It had once been well used, but now none would even approach it. It was said that a demon waited in the middle for travelers foolish enough to cross. What it did with them, no one knew for sure, because no one had returned to tell the tale. I'll cross, said a naive young soldier, and despite the warnings of the older men, he saddled his horse, greased her back, and set out for the Agi Bridge. The closer he got, the less he could see. A dense fog enveloped the bridge. His horse shuddered and tried to turn back, but he pushed her on. Halfway across, he saw a poor young woman leaning against the railing. She had a cloak the color of kelp and long hair black as night with eyes like shale rock. She appeared abandoned and alone. The young man couldn't help but feel pity and for a moment forgot his task. The temptation to rescue this poor woman was suffocating. But the horse let out a frightened whinny, and remembering tales of the demon, the man pressed on. The woman called out, Wait, brave soldier, please! But the man fixed his eyes ahead and pushed onward. When the woman saw that he would not stop, she began to change. Her cloak drained to the color of blood. Her long hair swelled, and her black eyes melted into a sharp, furious yellow. She rose taller above the bridge, and with a scream that shook the earth, she reached out her pointed claws towards the man and his horse. But her hand slipped from the horse's greased back, as the man pressed on. The demon howled with wicked fury while the man cleared the fog and galloped off the perilous bridge. For weeks, the young soldier would speak to no one. The others were amazed he had survived but could not get a word from him. Finally, he sought out the guidance of a diviner. The diviner told him he was lucky to be alive but foresaw great peril on the anniversary of the crossing. As the time grew closer, the young man's terror became insufferable, and he secluded himself completely. He would speak to no one, not even his wife. Finally, the dreaded day arrived. He pulled every window shut and locked every door. He would speak to no one. The hours crept on painfully, until finally the sun began to set, when suddenly there was a knock on the door. The young man jumped and suppressed a cry. Go away! I will see no man today. But, brother, I must speak with you. No. Come back tomorrow. But, brother, I have traveled all day to see you. I bring bad tidings. Then you must tell me tomorrow. No, brother, you must listen. Our beloved mother is dying. She sent me to fetch you. A wave of sorrow washed over the young soldier, and his eyes filled with hot tears. There was no one in the world he loved quite like his mother. So with great hesitation, he opened the door and let his younger brother inside. He looked into his brother's broken eyes. They embraced and were united in their grief. They stood there for several minutes, weeping and sighing. But when the soldier tried to pull apart, he felt his younger brother's grip tightening around his shoulders. Brother, let me go now. <laughs> A low, feminine, feminine laughter boiled in his ear as the younger brother slowly turned his head, revealing not the face from before, 
but rather the sharp yellow eyes and cruel smile of the demon. The demon flashed her eyes and hissed in pleasure as she pushed the terrified soldier down to the floor. Frantically, the young man tried to free himself, but each time he nearly escaped, she pulled him back in with her pointed claws. Over and over and over she did this. She was wearing him down to exhaustion. When suddenly, out of the corner of his eye, he saw the silvery glint of his sword and stretched his fingers to grab the hilt. With his last ounce of hope, he raised the sword above his head. His salvation felt near, but in one swift motion, the demon unhinged her jaw and bit off the soldier's head. His lifeless body fell to the floor with a thud. Venomously and vengefully, she spit out the head, picked it up by the hair, and danced around the room in silent glee. She twisted herself into a long yellow snake and slithered away. And although the soldier's soul was mourned and his body burned on the funeral pyre, his head was never found. And that's the tale of the Augie Bridge.